Good morning, good morning, Mr. Celestine. <coughs> Excuse me. Phil, happy Thanksgiving, sir. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, and I, so, I see you. You're, you're looking very patriotic today, sir. Richard, happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, sir. Alexander, Manuel, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Good afternoon, Manuel. Guys, I will, as ever, give just a minute or so for those that might be running slightly late. But I want to ask, how's everyone feeling today? How is everyone feeling today? Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling incredible. Manuel, drop a message in the chat box as you usually do. Just let me guys, guys, just let me know. Just let me know. Okay, Manuel, you're feeling nice. That's good. That's good. That's good. I'm feeling energetic. I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling grateful. I'm overflowing with gratitude today, guys. And although we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I know it's, it means a lot to you guys across the other side of the pond. And you know, guys, usually I get inspiration about what I'm going to talk about. And on occasion, I'll wake up during the night and something just comes to me. Guys, guys, can you all hear me nice and clearly? Give me a thumbs up if you can all hear me nice and clearly. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, as I said, I usually get inspiration and I will wake up during the night on occasion and scribble down notes and then fall back asleep and wake up in the morning and look at this mess on my pad and kind of make out what I was writing because that's how the thoughts come to me. I don't usually, and it's, I don't usually prepare extensively for these calls because I like to flow naturally and I feel the, I usually feel the energy and understand what I'm going to talk about. And this morning I woke up and even this morning I was kind of almost struggling this morning to think nothing's coming, nothing's coming through. What am I going to talk about? And then I sat down and thoughts just started to download. And I thought it's Thanksgiving today. I have to spend some time focused on gratitude and got focused on what we should be all extremely grateful for. Because we all have to understand, when we woke up this morning, our eyes opened and our lungs filled with air, that was a gift. Today wasn't promised. Today was not promised. And I think all too often we get into this mode of complacency where we start believing we deserve everything and almost having an attitude of entitlement. And that's not where we should be. We should, we should absolutely be grasping and living every day to the full. You know, I think that there are three words that should sum up every day. Live, laugh, and love. If you can make every day consist of those three things, Live it like it's your last. Love until your belly hurts. And love everyone and everything. Your life starts to take on a different perspective. Your life starts to almost look a different way. And some might think that sounds a little bit kind of, oh, you're just getting into that mode. But we have to understand, when you live in that place, when you... Let everything go. You are, are completely free of any negativity. When you forgive completely and wholeheartedly everyone and everything, you start to feel different. I promise you, you start to feel different. When you hold no grudges, and you might think, what's this got to do with mindset, Kev? This has got everything to do with mindset. I'm going to explain the why behind that. When you hold on board negative feelings, negative thoughts, who do you think that's, who, who do you really think that's affecting? It's not affecting the person you've got negativity towards. I've said this before. That's like me drinking poison and expecting you to die, Phil. It's not going to happen. If I drink poison, surely I'm the one that's affected. And if I hold negative emotions because of something I think that was unjust, something I think I didn't deserve because I'm all in my own feelings about the situation. I'm the one who suffers. 
when I wake up each day and I hold those thoughts in my mind and I replay it and I replay it, I'm the one who consistently suffers. And guys, do you know the crazy thing? Is that it's been said that 50% or as much as 50% of what we remember is incorrect. So just imagine that. You're holding a grudge about a situation and 50% of what you're holding a grudge about is wrong anyway. What the, how does that make any sense? How does that make any logical sense? But yet you're going to hold those feelings close to your heart and allow that to affect you. And that will affect everything you do, whether you realize it on a conscious level or not. Because those feelings of negativity, those feelings of ill will, are held in your unconscious mind. And another thing we have to realize is this. The left side of your brain is very logical, but the right side of your brain is very artistic, creative, and emotional. So when you hold those emotions, they have a huge impact on everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if they impact your emotions, do you think that they impact your, your, your actions? Of course they do. Because let's think about this. Your thoughts create your feelings, which create your actions, which therefore create your results. So you're holding all of this negativity for, their, for whatever reason, because you believe something, someone's done something to you unjust. It's crazy. Okay, so Phil, you're asking, how do you get it out of your head? It's not easy, but I'm going to tell you quite simply. By sitting down and completely forgiving. Completely forgiving. What you have to understand is, when someone takes an action, you don't know what's going on in their mind. We're always thinking about it from our own perspective. Well, they shouldn't have done that for whatever reason. Do you know what? That's their model of the world. Whatever action they've taken is based on their model of the world. So you have to go deep inside and just say, I forgive. And you're not forgiving for them, you're forgiving for yourself. And the quicker you learn to sit down, truly say, you know what? I forgive that person. And even if you no longer want them in your life, forgive them, send them love and release them. That's what you have to do. Forgive them, send them love and release them. And the more you practice this is the easier it becomes. There you go, Richard, Richard, you hit the nail on the head. When you walk a mile in someone else's shoes, sometimes that's, that's what I call moving the frame. You get to see things from a different perspective. And as I said before, I'm gonna give you another phrase I've given you before. Perspective is, or sorry, perception is projection. The way you perceive things to be is the way you project into the world. So sometimes simply, Taking a side step and looking at things from a different view will give you a whole different picture. But as I said, more importantly, what we really, really have to do is just learn to forgive. Give thanks for what we have, live in a state of gratitude, and learn to forgive. People do the craziest things all the time, and that won't change. But what can we control in this world, guys? What can we control, truly? We can control ourselves. We can control the actions that we take and the words that we speak. That's what we have true, unadulterated control over. So live in a state of gratitude. Live in a state of forgiveness. And I'm not asking you to be a saint. I'm asking you to forgive yourself so that you can, you can move forward, so that you can um, achieve the goals that you set for yourself. It all boils down to when you really know your why. And once again, 
you guys probably understand me by now. I always like to give you the why behind I'm saying things. The reason why I like to give you the why behind the, why I'm saying things is that explains to your mind and that then allows you to take action. Because when I talk to the why part of your brain, that is the part of your brain that initiates action. The reason it's so critically important to know your why is because that's the only thing that will keep you on the road. When days get tough, Richard, you know what I'm talking about when days get tough. When days get tough and you can't see the wood for the trees, you have to focus on two things. You have to get in a state of gratitude. You have to focus on the things you have in your life right now to be extremely grateful for. And then you have to focus on your why. You have to always remember, why am I doing this? What is the purpose behind why I'm doing this? Because when you understand the purpose behind why you're doing it, that will give you the strength. And what you also have to remember, guys, is that you are all far stronger than you would have ever thought. Far, far stronger than you would have ever thought. And believe you me, you will only ever know how strong you are when strong is your only option. I know for a fact, all of you guys have been through your own particular adversity. You suffered your own turmoil. You suffered your own devastation, no matter how big or small it might be. But when you look at today, you must think, how on earth did I get through that? Because when you were sat in the middle of that cyclone, when you were sat in the middle of that mire, I know for a fact you thought, I can't do this. This is too much. Believe in yourself. But this strength, this tenacity, it only comes when you forgive yourself, when you love yourself, and when you live in a state of gratitude. So as I said, I want to move on to understanding your why. Because the why is the part of your brain that controls your action. Who writes down their goals? Who writes down their goals? Give me a thumbs up if you're writing down your goals. Manuel, please drop it in the chat box. If you're writing down your goals. Who writes down your goals? You have to. The reason why it's important to write down your goals, when you take them from your mind and use your own fair hand and you put it on paper, there's something magical about that. Oh, Manuel, Manuel, see? You always drop these gems of gold dust. That's correct. Reading them every day keeps you focused. However, I'm going to let you know the flip side of that. Just the fact you've written them down and you've taken them out of your mind, if you have enough desire and you write them down in enough detail, I promise you there are things that you will look back in a year or two's time and you might not have even remembered you wrote it down, but they have come to manifestation. Absolutely, Manuel. If you don't know, if you don't have a goal, you don't know where you are. If you have no goal, you have no direction. And if you have no direction, you will spin in a circle like a busy fool. And I've said this to all of you on many an occasion. Being busy and being productive are at two opposite ends of the scale. Lots of people tell you, oh, how was your day? Oh, wow, today was so busy. And I do a chuckle when I hear that. And usually the first question I ask is, was it busy or was it productive? And in most cases, I would go as far as to say as in 90% of the cases, it was just busy. Because guys, you see you guys that are here. You see you guys that turn up every day, that are going through the program, that are putting your best foot forward. You see you guys? You guys are part of the very small percentage that are taking action. Prime example, today's Thanksgiving. Most people are in holiday mode. Phil, I know you work nights. Did you work last night, Phil? 
And you're still here. And it's Thanksgiving. And I know you're working today, right? But commitment has got you here. Because you're not interested, you're committed. And this is because, tell me if I'm correct, Bill, you're now starting to understand your purpose. You're starting to understand that you have a goal, you have a dream, you have something to aspire to. Am I right? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. But this only comes when you start to truly believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't truly know your why, if you don't have that level of conviction that nothing in this world is going to stop me from achieving my why, you're going to spin around in a circle. Knowing your why, for me, links very closely to what I call the power of positioning. You position yourself mentally as to where you want to be. And this ties, all of what I'm saying, it all ties in, it's all intrinsically linked. You position yourself as to where you want to be. You write your goal. And your goal, effectively, is going to be something you desire that hasn't quite come to manifestation yet. But I want you to be very careful about the language you use when you write your goal. I need you to be very, very careful about the language you use when you write your goal, guys. Always write your goal in the present tense as though it's already been achieved. That is critical. Write it in the present tense as though it's already been achieved. Because you know why, guys? If you write your goal in the future, guess where it shall remain? In your future. You have to write in the present tense as though it's already been achieved. And the reason why you need to write it in as much detail as possible is because, as I said, the right side of your brain, which is the side of our brain that is the creative part of our brain, the side of our brain that our unconscious mind generally taps more into, is very creative. When you write in detail, that allows your unconscious mind to create a picture. When you create that picture, you can live into that picture. Something called creative visualization. You guys know I always speak about the power of visualization. You have that dream in your mind, you have that goal in your mind, you picture it, you paint it so clearly that when you close your eyes, you can step into it and you can live into it. All of these things link closely. So as I said, when you speak about and you think about the power of positioning, you're going to picture yourself having already achieved your goal. And when you create that picture, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've had to evolve into a different person to achieve that goal. Am I right? Give me a thumbs up if this is resonating, guys. Give me a thumbs up if this is absolutely making sense. Okay, so when you've evolved into that different person to achieve that goal, what you have to look at is the gap. And what I mean by the gap is the gap of who that person is and the gap of who you are now. And what you then do is something I love to do, which is called reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is quite simple. You look at the traits, the characteristics, the attributes that that new gentleman has got, or that new lady for those that are listening, and you think about what has that new you got that's different from what the current you has. And you work backwards, you work backwards into how you have evolved into that person. You look at the characteristics that have been developed that you need to develop in order to become that person. And when you do that, what happens is quite clear. You now have a path of the things that you need to do. This is why personal development is so important. This is why the thought leaders and the incredible entrepreneurs of the world are consistently reading. I've given you this statistic before. 
The incredible entrepreneurs read on average one book a week. Bill Gates is said to read on average 50 books a year. That is pretty much one book a week. And look at what Bill Gates has achieved. But yet he's not sitting back on his laurels. He's still taking on board masses of information because you never stop growing. The moment you stop growing is, in my opinion, where you draw the line in the sand and you start dying. When you consistently keep learning, it keeps your mind young. When you look at scientific journals, Alzheimer's and dementia and these sorts of diseases are often degenerative diseases. And I know this because my late mother who passed away last year, she had dementia. They are degenerative diseases because you stop being active in your mind. That is the importance of learning. That is the importance of learning. All of this comes together. So I want to touch once again on goal setting because goal setting is incredibly important. So you've written down the goals, but how do you write down effective goals? Ah, incredible. Richard, your mother's going to stay young. <laughs> your mother's going to stay young. Doing puzzles every day is an incredible way to keep the mind active. Doing crossword puzzles, doing Sudoku, um, and another incredible way to keep yourself young, which is quite difficult to attain when you reach a certain age, is to learn a language. Learning a language is one of the most difficult way, sorry, one of the best ways to keep your mind young. And I'm gonna say, however, unfortunately, because of the way the English language has been manipulated over the years, and because of the way our minds are all shaped around the language that is our mother tongue, you will generally find those who have English as their first language struggle more to learn the other languages. That's a fact. Other people who speak uh, whatever language, Spanish, French, when that is their mother tongue, they pick up English a whole lot easier because English is actually a very easy language, but because of the way it is designed and formatted, it stunts our ability to be able to learn other languages easily. It doesn't mean it's impossible. All it means is that, Manuel, you, you, Manuel, you never cease to amaze me, sir. You never cease to amaze me. That is what we call linguistic finesse. That's not what we call bilingual, that's what we call multilingual. Congratulations, sir. I have always loved to be able to speak another language. I speak fluent Jamaican, <laughs> but unfortunately I speak no other language. But I'm going back to what I say, keep your mind young, keep learning and keep reading, keep taking on board new information. Keep striving for new information as though that was the oxygen you need to survive. Because guess what guys, as an entrepreneur, that is the oxygen you need to survive. As an entrepreneur, you have no job description. You are the one who's creating the job description. Yep, Manuel, audio books are incredible. Audio books are incredible, absolutely incredible. Simply because, one, you can multitask, but two, you have to remember, people learn in different ways. You have visual learners, so those people that want to read a book. You have kinesthetic learners, those who like to touch and feel. So they will also potentially want to touch and feel the book. You have audible learners, those who will love to listen to an audio book. And you have those who are a cross section of all. I'm apparently, when my statistics were measured, I'm apparently a cross section of all. I'm very kinesthetic. I'm also very audible, but I'm also very visual. A lot of the time you'll actually hear in people's language how they prefer to learn. If you listen to the words people use, when you listen very carefully, people will speak how they prefer to learn. So if they talk in pictures, if they talk visually, if they use visual words, you'll find that that person is usually a visual learner. 
if they ask you, can you understand me? Can you hear what I'm saying? Listen to me carefully. How does that sound to you? That person is generally an audible learner. When I put forward this, this proposition, how does that make you feel? When people are talking language of feeling, they're a kinesthetic learner. These things are just a matter of a course, but they are interesting to know. <laughs> Manuel's mentioned that he needs to hear an audio book three times. It's okay, Manuel, because guess what? You can still be multitasking, but the beauty of an audio book also is you can speed it up. So you might want to listen to it on 1.25 or one and a half times speed. So you can actually digest the information quicker. And you'd be amazed that even if you put in an audio book and you fall asleep to it, do you know how much of that information you retain because your unconscious mind does not go to sleep? Your unconscious mind is always listening. That's why you find sometimes people that learn a language will fall asleep to it. One of the easiest ways for people who are studying exams to revise is to have audio notes and to listen to them before you go to sleep. Because once again, when you are going to sleep, your brain waves change. And when your brain waves change, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to take on board the information. Guys, I want you to really, really understand how you learn. Because when you understand how you learn, ah, beautiful, manual, beautiful, mentor box. Yes, I've heard about that previously. It condenses, so it gives you an overview. It gives you a summary of what the book is about. But yes, it's very, very important to understand how you specifically prefer to learn. Because when you understand yourself, what you would then find is that you can tap into your attributes and ensure that you use them in the best possible fashion. Guys, is this resonating? Is this way? I know this is making sense because I can only see Phil's head down and I can see Richard's head down consistently, which means those notes are flying. Those notes are flowing. And guys, remember, these videos get uploaded. You can go back and watch them. I do these for you guys. This is a resource I want you to be able to tap into. If you find value from what I deliver, go back and listen, guys. Simply because... It's like a library for you. I do these because I love to do them. I do them because I absolutely love to do them. It energizes me and it keeps things fresh in my mind. Plus, I also learn from you guys. I also learn from you guys. And I learn how I can test and tweak. Because, amazingly enough, I look back at the recordings and I look at the interaction. Oh, excellent, Richard. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I appreciate it because it's there for you. And I will more than likely consistently add other small videos. They might not all be half an hour, but um, I will just continue adding because it's valuable and it's an outlet for me. This allows me to download the noise in my mind, get it out. And if you guys can pick sense from the nonsense and there's some value in there for you, then everyone's winning. I get some clarity and you guys get some value. I call that a fair exchange. What we call in this world, a win-win situation. Give me a thumbs up, give me a yes in the chat box if you agree. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Guys, it's happened again, it's happened again. And I, 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 time catches us. But I wanna end the day by saying happy Thanksgiving. Make today a beautiful day. Think of the things you are grateful for. Think of the things that you have in your life that add value to you. And think of those who are no longer here to enjoy it with you. And on that note, guys, I simply want you to remember, all can and will be achieved. How many steps? One step at a time.
I'm committed to you, are you committed to yourselves? Because if so, I will be on this same bad channel tomorrow. Guys, much love, much blessing. Make today win. Enjoy. Take care, guys, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.